Hey traders, TG Watkins here of simplertrading.com. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your charts like mine. Now, depending on how you want to tweak it after that, totally fine. This is just how I've set them up. It'll help get you started, get you kind of into a few things. And from there, you can go around and tweak it to whatever works best for you, your indicators, your eyes, your style, whatever you want. The other thing is, uh, as we go through this, I'm just going to keep going. And if you want to go back and pause and rewind anything like that to kind of get a different section, feel free to do it as many times as you want. And that way you can kind of figure out exactly what's going on. So for me, I tend to have two or three time frames on each of my grids here. So this one has two. You can see that I have the daily and the hourly. And then sometimes I have a third one, which is the 15 or, you know, I have the monthly, weekly, whatever like that. Where you start first is up here in the top right. And this is how you select how many different grids or time frames that you want up here. So you can see you can have any number of configurations possible. Right now, I just have it on the first two. So from that, the right side of the screen here, this whole thing is already done. This is how I like to have my charts set up. And the left one is blank. And I'll start digging into it to show you how I do each thing. Now, perhaps one of the first things we get into here and you'll go to appearances. This is so for me, I like to have my candlesticks grayed out mostly because I like to look at the moving averages the most. And so having the red, green, red, green really kind of makes it difficult to see the color or the smoothness of the moving averages behind it. The other thing is sometimes the color of red or green can really act on our psyche and we get really excited when we see it green and that can sway our decisions or really uh, you know, very bad when we see red and uh, it can make us uh, just change our mindsets a little bit. So having it gray means that I don't have to see anything like that. And I just look where price is in relation to moving averages. And so what you can see, if we go over here to appearance underneath settings, and uh, you know, first time we you know chart um, candle is for our, our candle setup. And then basically, I just gray it out, pick the kind of gray that works for you and your background, whatever. And then same thing, the fill up, fill down. And I also like to see the wicks. And so you can see the example over here. That's where you can how you can adjust it real time. Everything's grayed out and you just find the right color, color that works for you if you want that. And then I like to have my crosshair bright, stands out, nice green like that. And then for my background or see, sorry, the volume, I like to also have a kind of a faded gray so that I like to know it's there. I like to see what's going on, but I don't want it to be too obtrusive, anything like that. And uh, I don't care again about the red, green, red, green. You can change it if you like, though. And then as far as the background, I pretty much just want it black. You know, that helps the, the contrast to see with the gray and the colors. And uh, I think also there's some um, uh, science about for your eyes to not have all that brightness looking at you. So uh, hopefully it's a little bit easier on the eyes. So that kind of goes for the color situation. And then I think the only other thing over here on equities that I tend to do is just make sure that you have, I think show extended hours, uh, or sorry, the um, start aggregations at market open. I've had some glitches, so make sure you uncheck that. And then if you do want your volume on, make sure that your volume subgraph is on. And then I think over here in general, one other thing that you could be looking at is uh, I like to synchronize my crosshairs. That way I can see when I line something up on daily, I can see it on the weekly, the monthly, the 15th, five, whatever. I like can I also cross reference that pretty well. So I think that pretty much covers that. And then we go into up here, we go into studies. And from there, you can start putting on all the various things. So one thing that I already have up here are the Keltner channels. And I, I reference them as the ATR bars, whatever, average true range. But they are based off of the Keltner channels. And what you'll see is uh, here we got a bunch of Keltner channels. So you just search for that. And what I like to use is the third factor. So right here, third factor. And it's based off of the 21 simple moving average. So 21 simple moving average, third factor, and that gives me the wide ones. Now, I also like to have them be a certain color. So um, also for simplicity, I actually uncheck right here. I uncheck the center, the center one, because I don't need it. I already have a, a 21 EMA, so I don't need to have a 21 SMA showing up and kind of just cluttering the place. So then what I like to do is I take these upper and lower bands and I like to colorize them. So I don't know if it's in here, but... Basically, we're just going to call it blue. 
and we'll call this one blue for the upper and lower. Uh, you can see it's a little bit more of a teal color for what I normally do. And a little bit of a trick for you guys, if you're ever using these things where you're adjusting your uh, studies, uh, once you've made your adjustments and you know that's pretty much how it's going to be for any time you set it up, come up here to save as default and that'll load everything the way that you need it. It's actually pretty great. So that's a, a good workaround for that. So we say OK. And you can either hit apply because now you see it just made it change. Or if you're done, you just hit OK. So it's another way you can get around that. Uh, but I guess one more thing that we'll set up in through here, the moving averages that I have are this teal color, which is the 8 EMA. You have the orange red color, which is the 21 EMA. And then you have the magenta color, which is the 50 SMA. And then I have the salmon color, which is the 200 SMA. And again, those can be adjusted over here, studies, edit studies, and you can see, there we go, here's the 8, 21, 50, 200, and you can see it's exponential, exponential, simple, simple. So that's the way you can get in there, adjust them as you need, whatever you want to do there. And then to make my left chart look like my right chart, I start adding my own indicators that I have. So let's start off with the first one. We got the Moxie indicator, and for me, let's see, it's going to be the daily, so Moxie daily, and we've got that so I can say apply, boom, right there you got the Moxie indicator daily. Then if we look lower on the right side, we can see that the next indicator that I have is the Squeeze Pro. Now, whether you have the Squeeze Pro or just the Squeeze, doesn't matter, it's whatever you want. So let's type in the Squeeze. If I can, uh, that's why, ST, SQ, there you go. So there's the Squeeze Pro. And for me, I like to adjust my colors. So you can see that along the squeeze, I've actually changed my colors from the original. I think this is the original, but I've changed it because uh, it was important to me. I like the, my background was already black and some of the dots were black, so I changed that. So we're just gonna say, okay, apply it for there. And then the other thing that we added, uh, I like to use the stochastic. So let's see, it's the slow stochastic. So start with stochastic and you can see it says slow right there. And I added it and here are the, the numbers that I use. I don't know if it's anything special. I picked it up from another trader friend of mine years ago. It seems to work pretty well. It's not a, a main indicator for me. It's just a kind of a, another one that I like to use in the background just to kind of cross, cross reference. And uh, these were the settings that they had. And then again, you can change the colors, you know, from the slow, you can see there's the purple and all the other stuff. So just adjust that, got that, and then you can say apply. Now, one other thing that you can do if you want to be moving your indicators around, let's say you wanted the stochastic up here, you can actually move it around and there you go. So just make sure that when you move these around that they have two, two different bars because otherwise what you do is you can see here, you see how they're both in the same thing. That means they overlap. And that's, for the most part, not going to work out for a lot of indicators. You need them to be separated. So what you do is you pull that apart, make sure that they're each in their own categories here, and then you say apply, and you can see that the indicator switched on the page. So pretty much have everything up and through there. You say, okay, great. And then from here, you just uh, adjust how big you want them. So if you have on, let's see, take up a lot of screen or a little screen, you can do that all through here. You just kind of wait till your arrow turns to a double-headed arrow, and then you can move it around. And I think that's, uh, for the most part, pretty much how I set up my charts. Once you have that done, make sure you save these things. There are a couple different ways. You can go over here to style and you can save your style. That's one way. Or if you want to save your grid, you come over here to this box again and you can say save grid as, and that'll help save some things because if you ever lose it or change things or whatever, you need to revert back. That's one way to do it. And then to add multiple things, if you want to keep changing them, you go over here to the far right down this menu and just say detach and it'll just duplicate it and you can get a another one that you can go mess with and just save yourself some time so i hope that it works out for you guys um just start tinkering with it and i think once you get these basic things down uh you'll pick it up in no time so thanks again see you guys out there without simpler trading i could not have financial independence this is one of the best investments i ever made in my life it's helping me find consistency it's one of the things that won me 